today we are going to discuss about ulnar client and ulnar paradox introduction about ulnar client uh, it is the abnormal deformity of the hand which develops due to injury of the ulnar nerve there will be extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint the joint between the metacarpal that may be the pharyngeal joint and the flexion of the interpharyngeal joint of the fourth and fifth finger of the hand because the fourth and fifth fingers are supplied by the ulnar nerve it is basically it is basically lumbricals paralyzed due to ulnar nerve injury that lumbricals is supplied by the ulnar nerve later on we will see what are the muscles are supplied by the ulnar nerve now we will see the uh, muscles supplied by the ulnar nerve uh, ulnar nerve supplies in the uh, forearm region and the hand region the hand muscles which are supplied by the ulnar nerves are the abductor digiti minimi brevis flexor digiti minimi brevis opponens digiti minimi third and fourth lumbricals like we discussed is basically the it paralysis called the claw hand four uh, palmar interossi on your palm side four dorsal interossi on the back of your palm abductor adductor pollicis deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis and in the forearm it supplies mainly two muscles the flexor half ulnaris and the ulnar half of the flexor digitorum profundus now we can see the ulnar nerve here uh, ulnar nerve it uh, uh, in the diagram it is passing to the middle side of the elbow uh, and uh, it is a flexor supplied supplied flexor carpi ulnaris in between uh, passing between the flexor carpi ulnaris and uh, flexor pronators and going to the ulnar side of the uh, two fingers now we'll see the after this motor supply to all this muscle we'll see the sensory supply by the ulnar nerve and uh, we can see in the hand uh, in in this diagram we can see the ulnar nerve uh, su supplies on the two, one and a half fingers on the medial side side on the palmar aspect and on the and on the dorsal aspect also one and a half on the half size these are the sensory distributions of the ulnar nerve uh, regarding uh, talking about the uh, injury of the ulnar nerve we, it, it gets injured as a supracondylar humerus fracture because of the medial epicondylar fracture cubitus valgus leading to tardy ulnar palsy means uh, the ulnar palsy develop later on it may injure in cubital tunnel syndrome or if uh, tight flexor carpal nerve is aponeurosis there because it passes beneath the flexor carpal nerve and if there not in, entrapment occurs in, in uh, Gaon's canal at the wrist now we'll see uh, the roles of the different muscles uh, muscles uh, the medial to lumbricals we'll discuss the, the the normal function of the medial to lumbricals is to flex the metacarpophalangeal joints in sort called mcp of the little and ring fingers and extends the ip interpharyngeal joints of the little and ring fingers the interossei also present there has many functions to ab to abduct and adduct the fingers and the hypothenar muscles uh, functions to flex uh, adduct and oppose the little fingers and adductor adductor pulse is that supplies mainly the thumb and it functions to adduct the thumb means ulnar nerve has the supply to the thumb also along with this adductor pollicis now now the question is what is claw hand nerve the answer is simply the ulnar nerve and what is the nerve get involved that is the ulnar nerve now we will see the ulnar claw hand the deformity we can see in the little finger and the ring finger the as we discussed the muscles paralyzed are the lumbricals and the result this result lots of the flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint loss of flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint and loss of extension at the ip joint and that developed the claw hand now the features what, what are the features of the claw hand the mcp mcp joints are hyperextended in the claw hand if the deformity develops the normal moment there will be no flexions at the mcp mcp joint so the mcp joint will hyper extended uh, hyper extended because that are unopposed extensor extension from the extension digitorum because uh, it will have extensors because extensor digitorum is working and the uh, the lumbricals are not working to flex it ip joints are flexed by unopposed 
unopposed flexions from the flexor digitorum profundus. Flexor digitorum profundus supplied by the its a medial heart is supplied by the ulna nerve get paralyzed. It is not working, so it will not uh, uh, it will not cause the uh, so it is uh, the features of the client. The MCP joints are hyperextended because extensor digitorum is not working, and IP joints are flexed by the unopposed flexions from the flexor digitorum profundus. It is acting because the nerve is not injured uh, in the forearm, it is injured the wrist, so it is working and there will be flexions. And the little and ringle fingers are only affected as the lateral two lumbricals are innervated by the median nerve. Mm, features of the uh, client MCB joints are hyperextended. Why hyperextended? Because extensor digitorum is not paralyzed, it's working. And IP joints are flexed. Why? Because flexor digitorum profundus is working. And the little leg fingers are only affected because the other two lumbricals on the lateral side that are supplied by the median nerve. Now we'll see the how we will test for the ulnar nerve damage. That one test is about the forming sign. In this test, paper is grasped between the thumb and the index finger. We know thumbs in the adductor policy supplied by the ulnar nerve and the index finger and is pulled out. Flexion of the thumb, thumb distal phalanx suggests the isolated ulnar nerve palsy, means it is not able to hold on the paper. Other test is the ulnar nerve compression test. That compression can be done at the level of the wrist. Water and shine, it is the inability to add. Adapt extended little finger in extended ring finger that is called the Warden Brook shine. Uh, now we will see about the term ulnar tunnel syndrome. Ulnar tunnel syndrome is basically the interruptment of ulnar nerve when it passes between pisiform and hook of hamet in hand. It gets compressed by ganglion or fracture of the hook of hamet. It may also get compressed between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris in the forearm act as we saw in the diagram earlier. Now that we discuss about the most important ulnar paradox. What is the paradox here? Uh, the lesion of the ulnar nerve occurs at the elbow, means the muscle supplied by ulnar nerve at the forearm and at the hand both are paralyzed. Along with four muscles of the hand, these two muscles of the forearm are also paralyzed. That is the middle half of the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor carpi ulnaris. Now in because of this, the ulnar claw hand will occur along with that the paralysis or paralysis of the flexor digitorum profundus will also occur. In the in claw hand, we have see, we have seen that the flexor digitorum profundus was intact, but here the paralysis of the flexor digitorum profundus also occurs. Means the feature of claw hand minus any kind of flexion of little finger or ring finger will cause is the paradox. Means like un unlike the claw hand they here there will be no little and ring finger flexion that is the paradox now one more term is cubital tunnel claw hand ulnar nerve gets involved in the cubital tunnel causing cubital tunnel claw hand these are the other sides of the injury of the ulnar nerve now what are the surgery that is available to correct the claw hand yes it is total deformity and Firstly, we have to use the appropriate splints to stretch it out. After it is not successful and after uh, the conservative treatment, we can go for the ten tendon transfer surgery like the burkett halter method of tendon transfer, Bunnell method, and Coley method of tendon transfer. And post, uh, post of that physiotherapy, like occupational therapy and splinting may be required. Now we will see one more term, app hand. There should be no confusion. In app hand, there will be thinner wasting thumb held in the line with fingers and it is due to the median of palsy thank you we'll see you again